let me tell you a story about a woman with an old pattern and some preconceived notions. And welcome to the channel. I'm Christine Cooper, the Saucy Seamstress. If you haven't been here before, welcome. And if you have, welcome back. Um, today is, I guess, the second video in a series about, 19, uh, about 1920s dresses. Um, check out my A Closer Look from two weeks ago, where I, you know, we take a closer look at two 1920s dresses from my personal collection. This week, I sewed a dress from a 1920s pattern. This one, to be precise, I have made this pattern before, but it was many years ago when I was not experienced at working with vintage patterns or sewing or costuming or life. So it didn't turn out very well. And so I went into this project with some preconceived notions. One, I know this pattern doesn't fit my body type very well. Two, I knew I didn't have time to devote to make it look the way I wanted it to look. And three, I was trying to do some stash busting, which is good, right? Especially when you keep your fabric in an old steamer trunk and you're starting to outgrow it. I knew how much fabric I needed and um, in going through my stash, I have lots of fabric that length or longer. However, because I thought that this dress was not gonna look good no matter what I did. Um, I didn't wanna use anything that I liked too much. So, top tip, if you're not crazy about the pattern, don't use an ugly fabric. It'll make it worse. You would think that I would know that, but I didn't, I, I, I don't know. I went into this uh, actually excited to make this again because I know that my skills are better. However, I did not, um, I wasn't excited. I picked out the fabric, I got everything set up, I was overwhelmed with things going on. Like it was, it was, it's midterms, it was midterms this week. I was not excited and you know, it turns out that when making a project, um, you need some sewing skills and you need some design skills and some fitting skills. Um, but you also really need a good attitude, which I did not have. And so you will see that reflected in this week's video and you will see that in the complete project and that it's not great. So let's get into it. Welcome to the new McCall pattern. This pad the pattern pieces are printed and you can see there are some instructions on here. An interesting tidbit, don't cut off the margins. Those will just fall away as you trim away the fabric. Step number three is decoration and it's kind of interesting the options that they give you and it kind of makes me make want to try again. We've got a cutting diagram and the instructions. And these are all of the assembly instructions that you get. So things like join right underarm seam of camisole, join side seam of camisole. But we do also get these little extras. So if you don't know how to make a bias underfacing, here you go. Don't know how to finish a seam, here you go. Don't know how to make a belt, here you go. So it does provide you with a little bit of additional information, but you are kind of stumbling your way through how to finish an opening with an underlap and add snaps on stuff. We are working on doo -doo -doo, 1920s pieces and I've been staring at this fabric forever trying to decide what the complementary fabric for this early 1920s pattern should be. So I'm making the dress out of this stuff, which admittedly is not the most attractive fabric I have ever seen. However, I'm trying to do some stash busting and just get some things out of here that I've had for quite some time, like a couple of years <laughs> or more. And this was one of those things. To try to add some interest to this, I'm gonna have to make sort of slip underneath 
and the bottom of the slip a uh, decorative uh, fashion fabric which is what I'm gonna do and I think I'm gonna use these scraps of blue from oh, dang, from my <laughs> stash if I have enough which I may not if I had been a smarter person I would not have used the drab brown. I would have picked something that gone with black because I've made this pattern once before and I made the slip in black. But as it is, I am making a new one. And I didn't quite have enough. I'm using like some lining fabric and I didn't quite have enough so I've had to like sort of piece it and where there should have been a fold I've seamed down the back and so this is essentially the top um I have then the hip pieces so this one is the back and this one is the front so I'm gonna seam these on the left side which actually should have been the right side and um, then I will attach um, the, I don't want to call it the waist, it is actually the waist of this garment, however, the natural waistline is about here. Um, so this goes to the hip, and we have the hip piece, and then I'll be working on attaching the blue trim at the bottom. There isn't, the most one side is open. I'm supposed to make a placket and I think sew in some snaps or something. I might see if I can fit it on over my head so as to not have to do that. Um, because actually with this pattern, it's harder to make. There's more involved in making this than there is making the actual dress. So I would really like to just sort of get it done, check it off the list, so that I can get to the actual garment. It's going to be sort of a Frankenstein's monster of a, of a garment because I've got this like li polyester lining fabric, then I have this blue linen um, for <laughs> the, the bottom portion, and hopefully enough to make this little kind of, they call it a vest, um, but it's really just the filling in the V of the of the dress. And then again, I'm pretty sure that this is polyester. I'm actually, I'm 100% positive this is polyester. How many weird kinds of fabric can we have in one garment? So far three. I also did have to piece the bottom half of this um, linen fabric, so you can probably see the seam down the middle because this is not a very good linen. So I'm going to get some progress made on this. There we go. Checking back in, I have the slip made, and what you can't see is that the very bottom is this blue linen. I am going to start assembling the dress. I have all of my pieces cut out, and it's time to start assembling. Now, I did not make a mock-up of this. Just making it as it is, and it's going to look how it looks straight out of the envelope which is not what I would suggest. So following the order of operations for the blouse, we join the shoulder seams, then we join the side seams, then we sew sleeve bands to sleeves, join sleeve seams, sew sleeves into armholes, join back seam of collar, and sew collar to neck edge, and that's all the guidance we're given for this. That's it, that's all. So, 1920s dressing top tip. If, you want to make a 1920s dress and don't want it to look like a potato sack, don't make it out of material that looks like a potato sack. Okay, so checking in, I've got the body of the thing put together. I did finish <laughs> the side seams. I didn't finish the shoulder seams. They're just gonna be raw for now. Um, but we have left open the, uh, slit side so we have some slits there. I still need to hem it but I'm gonna wait until it's all put together because I also have to hem the slip which is also very long. I've got the sleeves put together. Heather did seam them finished. Oh, please focus. There we go. Finish them. 
um, got the running stitch, well I put the running stitches in before I did the seam, finished the seam, and I have sewed on the cuff, I just need to whip stitch this one. So today's goal, get the sleeves done and attached, because I also have some school work to do, um, and then tomorrow I attach the collar and hem. And that's the story. So we have got, yeah, see, I've got like, that's not even a mess, that's a blanket. Um, so I've got a lot to do. Um, the other thing that I did with myself this week is I patched all the holes in this wall and I painted it and then I hung my um, hat rack thingies on there and I don't really like that hat, but it's up, up there. And um, these are really great for keeping caps that are like starched and stiff so that they don't like get smushed. And also my market bonnet is here because I don't want the brim of that to get smushed and lose its shape. So I've been trying to simplify the sewing room also beautify the sewing room um, and make it more usable, functional, um, especially with all of the things that I have to do in here right now, though I should be going back to work at work in April. So we'll see how that goes. I think that's it. Bye! Hey folks! I have got the sleeves attached. Potato sack with sleeves! Um, I have pinned on um, this collar thing. Um, I had to join the center and then I pinned it around the neck, uh, stopping not quite at the center but almost right at the very center of the deep V neck. So I'm going to sew this on by machine. I don't even know what I'm seeing here. So stopping here at the very, almost the very center of this deep V neck. And honestly, this is gonna be the weirdest thing because this is like lower than belly button length, I think. And honestly, I haven't even tried it on. So that's really cool of me. Um, yeah, so it's all pinned on. I'm gonna machine sew this. And then I'm going to flip and and hand sew it so that the raw edge is encased. Then down here where it is loose, I will have to, um, uh, oh, 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 what am I doing? Sew it and then flip it inside out. So that is the plan to have this thing done. And then I have to sew the vest which is just the part that like keeps this from being a giant open deep V. This portion, I'll have to sew that on. I'll tack that on by hand. Um, and then all that's left to do is the hem. I'm trying to do a good job on it, but the mistakes that I made in the beginning of planning out this project are not going to save it. So the fact that I didn't make a mock-up, that I haven't adjusted the pattern at all, and that I chose this really terrible brown stuff is not going to help it. I do not have high hopes for this project, but next steps. So I am going to be making, and if it doesn't look right on me, it's because it doesn't fit me. Um, that's it. But we are going to be kind of focusing on the 1920s this next few weeks. And where I said I was going to choose two of those, I'm going to do three because I made this one. I do want to make the one hour dress because that is like something that anybody can make. And I'll do one of the later 20s more complicated patterns. And then we're going to move on to other eras. Because right now, I just want to sew all the Regency things. Um, with the, the hope that I will actually have a reenactment season this year. I do, I know that I need, um, some working class, like War of 1812 clothes, 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 um, 
workwear. Plus, I have had some fabric in my stash that has been meant to be a long-sleeved Regency dress forever, like a morning, not M-O-U-R, but M-O-R, morning dress. I've also, I also just need to make a Spencer real, real bad. Real bad! So, there's that. And then there are things that I've actually planned to do, which might get derailed by my need for Regency garments. But I'm going to sew this on, I'm going to do this scarf collar thing, and then I'll check in and show you how it looks. Okay? Okay. So, pros, it's done. Cons, it looks good. It looks terrible. <laughs> um, this is a potato sack dress. Like, I, there's like no other way. It is a potato. It even looks like a potato sack. I could have made it out of burlap and it would have looked almost exactly the same. So, a couple of things I could do to make it be better. I need to raise the vest. The slip thing keeps popping out here. I need to take it in about four inches, maybe more. And I could probably do that on the side seams, no problem. Um, but one thing that like, will never be fixed, I have broad shoulders, drops shoulder seams, make my shoulders look even wider. So I could narrow the dress altogether like by taking it in and see what happens. Um, and see if that helps to kind of slim the silhouette or I could take the sleeves off and just have this be like the short sleeve kind of look. I'm not, I might, I might, you never know. You never know. Next time we'll be working on the one hour dress and I'm going to use decent fabric on that one. Um, so check, check us out in two weeks. Um, if you tolerated this video the whole way through, just, just like it. There's no reason to not to, you made it to the end. Also hit that subscribe button. Mm, yeah, okay. I hate doing this. <laughs> so guys and dolls, it's the night, it's the twenties again. Hopefully they don't end the way they did the last time, but we'll do our best. So wear a mask, be kind, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.